Well, hi there. Tarantulas are scary. Way scarier than snakes, which is something I, I didn't know until I started bringing snakes and tarantulas to see people, like whole classes of students. Apparently tarantulas way scarier. And that makes tarantulas a pretty edgy pet. And this tarantula, the Chilean rosehair tarantula, is probably the least edgy of all tarantulas. Unless, of course, you're talking about the fact that it might be right on the edge of being the most reasonable pet we've ever covered on this channel. Because boy, are they easy. Honestly, in most circumstances, I think they're a little bit easier to take care of than a cactus. Some of the differences between tarantulas and what are called the true spiders, and one of the simplest is just the way that their fangs fold. The tarantulas, their fangs fold sort of this way, parallel to one another. They don't come at each other like the true spiders. So you might at some point find a great big wolf spider or other kind of true spider, and you might think, oh, is this a tarantula? Well, a tarantula isn't the name just for great big spiders, but they are a, a unique group of spiders that have those fangs that fold that way. They've also got a big cluster of eyes up on top of their cephalothorax. And so that's another way to tell them apart from the true spiders, which might have eyes kind of distributed all over the place. Spiders have lots of eyes. To help you figure out if the Chilean rosehair tarantula is the best pet spider for you, we're going to rate the Chilean rosehair based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the Chilean rosehair a score of four out of five. These are honestly about as good as handling a spider can possibly be. That said, I don't really like to handle them. And that's honestly why I'm pretty much leaving mine alone. My, my biggest thing is I have these dumb hands and they don't turn over, so I actually can't turn my palm face up, which is the best way to handle a tarantula. I've had some people complain about the way that I handle big lizards. I can't do it any other way because of my dumb palms. And because tarantulas don't do very well with a drop, I usually don't handle them. I also have to ask for change like a beggar because I can't just put a hand out like a normal human being. This is a species of spider that is unlikely to bite you. Though I gotta say, I mean, those fangs are good size and I really wouldn't want to be bitten by one at all. They also can kick hair off of their abdomen. So spiders have two big body segments. They've got a front segment called the cephalothorax, and that is the head and the thorax. The thorax being where the legs come from and the head being the head. Cephalization is actually the term for having a head. And so cephalothorax is their head thorax, and that's where all their legs come from. And then they've got this other segment in the back called the abdomen. Off the back of the abdomen, you've got two long little spindly guys that are usually tucked up and hidden, but you'll see them come out when they're laying down silk. Those are called spinnerets. And then they've got, they've got their eight legs and two kind of big leg-like appendages, which are the pedipalps. And so this segment of the body that doesn't have any legs coming off of it, except for the little spinnerets, which are almost like tiny little legs, that's the abdomen. And they've got the hairs on the back of the abdomen, and they'll use their legs to kick like a big cloud of those hairs, and they can be extremely irritating, especially if you breathe any in, get it on your skin, or worse yet, on your eyes. And so you don't want to irritate your tarantula. Usually they'll kind of warn you. They'll like get those legs up like, mm, I'm gonna kick some hairs. And if you just leave them alone, they usually stop. You can tell right when you get a spider if it's going to be a hair kicker because you can usually find some that have got like a big bald spot on their abdomen. Every time they molt, they'll get those hairs back and then they'll kick them in your face. And so like mine here, she doesn't have any evidence of ever being a hair kicker, but I've seen her threaten it before and definitely something to watch out for. Even though, you know, bites and hair kicking are things to watch out for with these spiders, they tend to be very, very relaxed about handling. Really great, hard to find a better tarantula to hold. Their venom is nothing to worry about. Really the fangs, I'm more worried about the fangs than I am about the venom. And so handling, it's totally doable. I just, I don't get any joy from it. And if they're dropped, it can be absolutely catastrophic for the spider. So, you know, in their best interest, in my best interest, I keep it to a minimum. I hold them. I, I hold them when I show them to people and do presentations. I want people to know that they're not scary, but 
I don't love it. I'd just like to take a really quick moment to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon. Uh, you know, as you probably understand, this is kind of a difficult time for us and, and, and all of us, really. But you guys are really helping us get through. Thank you. When it comes to care, we give the Chilean Rosehair Tarantula a score of 5 out of 5. You're going to need to get them some insects to eat. And after that, there are no downsides to the care of a Chilean Rosehair Tarantula. They are seriously easier to care for than a cactus. And, you know, and cactus are not as easy as you might think. They're going to need light and appropriate water and fertilizer and all these things. These guys pretty much need food and they need water. And, and they don't need either of those things super frequently. If you just try to keep their water bowl full, feed them every week or so, they're going to do great. They should do well at about what your normal house temperature is. You're only going to need some sort of a heat source like a heat mat uh, if your house gets very, very cold. So don't let them get too cold, but right around the temperature that most of us keep our houses, at least in the United States, they seem to do really well. They definitely don't need any kind of special lighting. This is a nocturnal spider. They only come out at night in the wild. They, they don't need heat lights or UV lights. Awesome. They, they need a dry substrate. It's pretty easy to keep substrate dry. And in fact, don't soak it, don't mist them. Um, they're gonna need a water bowl. So just uh, don't put cotton in there. A lot of people will tell you to do that. Don't do that. Just a water bowl. Make sure they can get back out of it. They're not going to drown themselves. Again, don't miss them. You don't want your substrate damp or wet. Just having that water bowl, that's all they need. Make sure that you have a lid. Um, uh, usually I say a good lid. This is really just a lid. They're not going to push their way out of things. It's just that they can climb glass. They don't do it very often, but mm, I grew up having one of these. I got one when I was in the sixth grade and I had her until I was 24. And I mean, she was an adult when I got her. So they live a long time. I saw her a few times climb up the sides of the enclosure. She can, they usually don't. If you need to go on vacation, you're gonna wanna give them a few crickets, not a ton. Don't dump a bunch of crickets in there because crickets can actually be dangerous. Just however many she'll eat while you're there watching, probably like one or two, fill up her water bowl and then leave. Go on vacation. If you're gonna be gone more than about two weeks, have a friend come over, throw two crickets in there, fill up the water bowl, and then they can leave. They don't need to come back for another two weeks. They're just real easy. They are gonna need a substrate that, that stays dry. Maybe that will hold a little bit of a burrow. In the wild, they burrow quite a bit, but in captivity, they don't tend to burrow even given the option. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Chilean Rosehair Tarantula a score of five out of five. Here are some things that you shouldn't do. Don't cook them. Don't drown them or soak their enclosure. Don't freeze them to death. Don't smash them or drop them. Feed it occasionally. They do like water. And basically, if you avoid these things that will kill them, it's gonna do awesome. So just don't kill your spider. It'll do great. Given anything even approximating proper care, they're gonna do awesome. When it comes to availability, we give the Chilean Rosehair Tarantula a score of five out of five. Availability does fluctuate some on these spiders, but this is probably generally the most available tarantula there is, at least in the United States. And they're gonna be in pet stores, expos, they're gonna be online. If you want one, you can find one. There just isn't a more available tarantula. And on top of that, even if they stopped exporting them, they're easy to breed and tarantulas produce a heck of a lot of babies. So spider breeders, I'm not saying just anybody wants to do this because, you know, keeping the male safe during and after breeding is challenging, but they're a fairly easy spider to breed. They produce a heck of a lot of babies. They're going to be around for a long time. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Chilean Rosehair Tarantula a score of five out of five. The spider itself is fairly inexpensive. They do really well in the cheapest of terraria. Um, you're going to need a lid. You're going to need substrate, a water bowl, hides if you want to go just crazy. And then uh, they seem to do really well. They like crickets a lot. Other insect feeders that you can get them to take uh, on occasion would be great as well. And that's pretty much it for costs. And that is why overall, the Chilean Rosehair Tarantula gets an, a score of 4.8 out of five, which I think ties it for the highest score we've ever given anything. The reality is not all tarantulas are this easy, but you know, this is a ridiculously easy tarantula and tarantulas generally are not super hard. They, they do live for a long time, so be prepared for that commitment when you get one. And, and, and my biggest piece of advice is don't get this spider because it's easy. 
Get it because you love Chilean rosehair tarantulas. And if you happen to love Chilean rosehair tarantulas, then I have spectacular news for you. It's one of the most reasonable pets to keep that you could possibly get. They're just super easy and, and really rewarding as long as you don't want a pet that's super, super active. You might have noticed she didn't do anything <laughs> during this video. And that's what they do most of the time. Uh, I, I've thought before about animals I'd like to, if I were shrunk down to the size of a feeder, what would I want to be thrown in with? This. I would love to be thrown in with a rose hair tarantula. If I had to be thrown in with a predator, as long as you don't run into it, you should be fine. And you will notice this. Most of the time, they're just gonna hold perfectly still and wait for something to bump into them and then they'll dive on it. As always, like and subscribe. Hope to see you real soon. See me rolling. Mm -hmm. I also have to ask for change like a beggar because I can't just put a hand out like a normal human being. Just do it in reverse. I do that. When I have to ask for the ball from my dog, I do the upside down hand, but that just seems to creep out the people <laughs> at the grocery store. <laughs> Based on our five categories, which are handleability. Oh no, I've done it with the wrong hand. No, I haven't. Huzzah! Do you not know which hand is your correct <laughs> no, hand? Not until I start doing it. <laughs> Don't come towards me. You're Please fine. Stop. You got